Hey guys, Battleblood here again. So I finally got uh, myself, or at least my main ice, on the test realm up to 68 as well. And I know the Woolly Mammoth has already been revealed and whatnot, but I'd like to go into it in a little bit more detail <clears throat> than was posted in some of the other videos. So it didn't really explain too much. Plus I'll be showing off, or at least uh, showing the, uh, the quest line itself here. For those who don't have access to the uh, the test realm, you know, because they don't they haven't they don't have the resources to, so might as well help the, get them a sneak peek into what goes on. So, um, as shown with the uh, fire quest, fire spell quest for the rain of fire or the volcano, uh, it, it was it wasn't too hard to achieve. So. Basically, uh, you reach level uh, 68, and you get a, a request from your teacher, as always. So, let's see. She's got a new spell for me. She loves this spell, apparently. One of her favorites, apparently. I think all spell, all I spell is Lydia's favorite. Uh, the Wooly Mammoth. They can recess time or something. They can stun for one round, it looks like. So, I don't know. Some people have said that the spell is very similar to Medusa. But, uh, it doesn't. It just. Medusa is much stronger. It stuns for two rounds. This one is for one round, I suppose. But let's get to it. So, I have to talk to. Is it Eric? Red Rune, or yeah, I guess we'll be talking to him. He's the one that gives out the the uh, Winter Tusk spells, the new spell, or the new spells that came out with Winter Tusk. But uh, along with this, along with this ice spell video and this ice spell quest, we're gonna explore some new astral spells as well. Uh, we have I've l trained Berserk and Mend. To find out what exactly they do. From my own interpretation, it looks like Berserk means you take an additional 40% damage from enemies, but you do an extra 30% outgoing uh, to your enemies, of course, for the next four rounds after using it, or after casting this. So, let's see. And then men here. It says plus 20% health for the next four rounds, so I'm assuming that that means you recover 20% of your current health, or at least, well, may, I don't know if it's your current health or your max health, but you regain 20% of uh, um, of your health, and I'm going to assume it's max, for the, over the next four rounds. So you kind of gain 80% of either your current or your max health back when the spell is finished. So I'm going to assume that it's based off of your max health, that you're going to heal uh, your entire health for over the, uh, for 20% per round, but we'll see, we'll have to test it out. So I'm going to do that at the same time as getting this, the Woolly Mam Mammoth spell. So I need to go to Grizzleheim. Almost went to Safaria out of habit. <clears throat> So Woolly Mammoth, it's a, it's a single target spell for 9 pips, about 800-900 damage I think, I'll have to reread that. Um, but it it just stuns for one round, so I guess it's another like a, a colossal hit. It's just a frost giant kind of nerfed, but buffed in, in different ways. <laughs> nerfed in the sense that it attacks only one target, buffed in the, in the sense of damage. Oh. Hmm. So apparently the woolly mammoths pose the danger to the bears and the wolves, which are land animals, whereas the ravens stayed far out of its range. So they had some issues, apparently. But during certain seasons, the woolly mammoths got up and left. You know, they couldn't handle the... Yeah. So... Wow, okay, so the bully mammoths apparently um, are affected by the seasons and the temperature. So if it gets too warm, 
If it gets too warm, then it's in their disadvantage. So, luckily we can we ice wizards aren't affected like that. We can cast ice magic in any weather. We can go dragon spire and and uh, have our say. So I'm gonna port back to Lydia to learn more about it, or at least maybe she'll direct me to another person or direct me over to supposedly dragon spire, because it seems that. All of the uh, spell quests, um, you that all schools have to fight the same villain to get their spell. So yeah. Oh no! So a copy of is this a textbook or something? A scroll? Aww. Great Rose. Can't let strangers with, you know, hoods steal anything from you. Come on. <laughs> You're a teacher. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I, I didn't think Great Rose was such a gullible person. I mean, but whatever. I guess in the world of magic, everyone wears a hood. So, or at least most people do. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I guess I can't blame her for for losing that spell, but so yeah, I, this is where it seems to fork um, in the same direction as other schools that everyone visits Milos, and then Milos, I suppose, you know, I suppose gives everyone the same uh, explanation that oh no, you have to fight the hoarder. And uh, supposedly she's mutated into a shadow weaver or something. Maybe I'll, I'll do some actual reading this time. I know I didn't do it for uh, for Hexythorn's quest, but we'll do it for this one and see if he presents the same explanation whatsoever. Okay. What's that? The Order has stolen a spell from Lydia Greros? Well, not the hoarder has stolen a spell. So wait, that's a little discontinuity, but you know I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. But that's interesting. He knows who stole it, whereas Lydia didn't, and we didn't. Assuming you know, collecting magic. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That's a little oops on their part, on the writing part, I guess. So again, you have to defeat it from the Hoarder, and that's why everyone has to fight the Hoarder to get their 68 spell, because I, I guess in every case they've been trying to steal the best, I mean, at least the currently best spells. Should it should be telling, I mean, I wonder if the Hoarder knows that there are level 80 spells and 90 spells and 100 spells that she forgot, but maybe... I don't know, there's probably a purpose to why she doesn't know about them yet. But I'm pretty darn sure she would be trying to uh, to steal them too. Had she known about them. So we're going to go ahead and visit her. Dragon Spire, Plaza of Conquest. Nice farming spot here. Let's see. And so, as as with most spell quests, and I think, yeah, as with most spell quests, because I know some spell quests you can have friends help you, this one seems to be a solo, since there aren't any sigils that your friends can share with you. So we're just going to pop in here. I have a short deck on, mainly because this boss is pretty easy. So... kind of has a masculine kind of tone to the voice to this hoarder. So I wonder if this is a different hoarder than the one not I guess it's my mistake kind of saying that they're the same uh, entity, but probably not. But we'll see. Let's see. So I'm just going to pull out some cards I don't even use that often just in case I don't have enough spells. I'm going to use a short deck here just so my blaze and all the right spells come up right away and I have uh, you know, 4100 health to spare. 
I'm just gonna hop in the battle right now. <clears throat> I haven't I haven't restitched in a year. This is all level 60 year. So here's Berserk. I'm gonna take some extra damage while doing some uh extra damage myself. But let's wait. Let's wait a few more rounds before that happens. I can go I could certainly blade up. And I'll wait until I get like a white pip to get rid of it with my uh my minion. <clears throat> So as if you haven't seen the other video where I uh, played on Hexythorn's fire, uh, basically Hoarder does not cheat. It's it's like fighting a dragon spire boss, really. Um, it's not challenging. <laughs> no, there aren't any strategies to use other than you know shield, blade, heal. No inter no interesting combos to pull off. So, let's see, Frost Giant, I'll go ahead and use Frost Giant next, unless I find some blades and whatnot, and let myself get hurt here and there before I use Mend to find out what goes on exactly when I'm using that spell. And again, I'm going to put my money down on saying that it heals 20% of your max health, which, uh, I don't know, eventually could be pretty overpowered. So let's put on Berserk, take some extra damage, and then fix that with Mend. So I don't know, maybe you can pull off some combos like that where you just switch bubbles interchangeably. And you don't technically have to wait uh, four rounds to switch between bubbles. So as you can see, the Berserk has a kind of a pale red color. I mean, it's not even, I wouldn't even say it's pink, it's just pale red. <clears throat> in itself, so it's gonna give me some extra damage. I'll go ahead and unleash the snow angel right here. So I should be doing extra 30% damage with this bubble, but taking an extra 40% from enemies myself. So typically you would do this when you have a bunch of shields on and ensure, you know, mit, uh, that an earthquake can't go off or shatter. That way you're protected for the next four rounds. Or just hit and then completely change the bubble up right away. So, but I'm going to go ahead and take some extra damage just so I can see the effect of Mend. And apparently uh, the Horde is building up its pips. I'm not sure if I want to call it a male or female just yet. But I, wanna, I guess I can call it a male based on its voice. Um, I'll change it next round. But it's got a lot of pips and a blade. So, And I've got this extra... F wow! Okay, Skeletal Dragon. Did not expect that. <laughs> Did not expect a rank 8 to come out of nowhere, so I'm definitely going to need that men for sure. This is an, this experiment just turned quite interesting all of a, sword, all of a sudden. <laughs> Great. So, I guess an eye for an eye, DOT for DOT. Well played, sir. Or ma'am. Whatever that is. I don't know, it's, a, it's pretty uh, androgynous. <laughs> so I'll have my minion help me out here. So last last uh, turn for this bubble here. So I'm going to go ahead and set on mend. Set off mend. And I wonder if it's like a pale green bubble. So it doesn't, so it's not mistaken for uh, infallible. Because right now it's it looks like a pale uh, amplify. Oh, there you go. Green. <laughs> Did it say 20% outgoing? Hmm. I wonder if it increases heals, not does automatic healing. Well. So there's an outgoing bubble for heals. That's interesting. Maybe it'll slowly offset Doom and Gloom a little bit, but not entirely. Hmm. So I guess it's not a recovery spell at all. Nope, it just increases outgoing, so that's going to boost your unicorn, your your main cast unicorns, that is, and your sprightlies, I suppose, for four rounds. Hmm. So if you're a, heal, a spam healer, or a heal spammer, either way, um, this would be very beneficial to you. You could cast, you know, pixie, 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 and get boosted that, that extra 20% in a row. It's It's like a mini sanctuary, then instead of a heal over time like I first assumed. So, 
Well, a little disappointed, I guess, but then again, getting healed for 20% of your max health or current health can be a little overpowering. Um, well, except in the case that if you have low current health, it wouldn't be overpowering, it'd be kind of misleading. <laughs> it'd be kind of dis- it wouldn't be to your advantage to heal at a low health, but then it'd be redundant to heal at a high health, or to use the bubble at a high health, so, you know. It all makes sense in the end. Glad that we cleared that up. So, yeah, it's a it's a little mini sanctuary. <laughs> not a uh, not a recovery spell, I guess. And then there's a scarecrow, so he's gonna get some extra. Dang, he's good. Bladed, so he's gonna get some extra life steal from my minion. This is why, you know, in PvP especially, that you should shield your minion. And now I guess I should be doing this in PvE. Great. I think it's, uh, it should be stun immune, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I, I guess I had more benefit having any heals in my deck, but then it's just kind of useless. But no worries, I got the Hoarder in the end. Hoarder version 2.0. But the magic you have taken will not help you. Oh. Well, Hoarder, you shouldn't make promises that you can't personally keep, but that's okay. Uh, so as you can see, all the uh, all the schools have their own bookshelf that uh, that the Hoarder had stolen from. Here's the life and three schools on that end, and here are the three schools on this end. And it doesn't seem like it's in any interesting order at all, because you have Storm, Fire, Death life um, you know it's not in moon or sun formation and yeah I'm gonna try to grab Ronin spell for him but apparently it's still giving me the ice bookshelf so <laughs> this thing these bookshelves have huge range on them I'll grab Ronin's just in case All right. now you have to return to your school teacher waiting for me. Now what happened over in the mi in the fire spell is that I had to do an extra quest after uh, you know defeating the hoarder. I had to find someone else. So let's see if she sends me to another person. 11k XP, that's big. I mean you want to do this spell or do this quest before you continue questing in uh, in uh, Zafaria. So let's see. Time to see if I can master it. Alright. Hmm. Gotta go back there, Kloss Boulevard. Okay. And I'm like with most of our uh, spells, quest, uh, spell quests, we'll meet up with who you know, some spirit of our school, and then come back to Grey Road to the teacher to actually pick it up. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna just empty out my deck so I can prepare. For the uh, for playing the spell when we get there, so I'm gonna head over to the Colossus Boulevard, meet up with the uh, with the Wooly Mammoth, and and pick it up on there, and then see what uh. I mean, what, I already explained what the spell does, but then we'll see it see it in action on this end as well, um, without killing any uh, any enemies. So we can see what happens, uh, or if there's any special effects. And right now we're, I'm thinking, or just theorizing that KI forgot to change the text on some of the cards. So when it's when it says one round or four rounds, for example, like on a, on a uh, conviction. See yeah, how it says four rounds, but actually, when you go to the help page, and you're looking up, let's see, symbols, interface, there you go, and you go to the very last page, oops, too far, 
see this there's a little clock that stands for rounds and that's actually the symbol itself appears on the woolly mammoth card and it says uh, one and then an icon so one round I suppose uh, which which I don't know I think for nine pips I don't know if I want to use that spell other than to get a huge damage burst and I you know and I suppose stun someone at the same time but um, well I guess there is a use for this spell in a 1v1 or any other situation and that's if you need to if you need to stun someone with an ice spell and do damage at the same time uh, you don't need to use Frost Giant because that can be countered with Beguile. Um, instead, you can hit someone, a, a single target, stun them at the same time. Uh, and if I mean, if Beguile hits you, you're still gonna you're still gonna target the right person. So I guess it makes some sense there why that was why that was necessary. Um, so you know, it's it's a freeze with higher accuracy than the freeze itself, and does immense amount of damage. I guess I wasn't going over there for that. It's a courtyard, so it's right here. Snowman. That guy gets knocked over by the mammoth. And here's the guy with his tattoo on his forehead. I like that ice symbol. What's that rumbling sound? Oh, shoot. Too close. Oh, what the? Oh, oh, okay. I thought he electrocuted me just now, and I was thinking back to the Dr. Katzenstein's monster. Another storm spell? <laughs> but, no. No, it was a stun... stun attempt. Okay, so we're back in the, in the classroom, so... Here we go. Yeah. You sent me out there, Grey Rose. <laughs> Were they not supposed to come? <clears throat> so as you can see, 800. Whoops, I went a little by too fast. So there you have it, 800 to 900 damage. In a single burst, 80% accuracy as all other his spells. Um, and stun for one round. So now we have a bigger stun. We don't have to rely on... As you see, Frost Giant, which we counter with Beguile, and hit all um, hit our allies and stun them, or at least remove a stun shield. And, and then it's not it's 80% as opposed to 70% on the freeze. So a little ironic. Huh? So what I'm gonna do is actually pack in some power so we can speed this up a little bit and see uh, the spell in action. And uh, well, it's going to stun for just one round, so nothing too special there. Just to one enemy. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use Colon Court, I guess. <clears throat> Actually, I, should, I think I'll use a bigger enemy, just so then we can see the stun effect after it hits. I mean... So I need to find a boss that's nearby. It's really close to one of these starting areas. Wisteria Safaria. Wow, okay. I guess the Yotomi counts. Whatever. <laughs> You know what? I'll just find the hoarder again. But I'm pr no, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to run into that specifically. So we'll just go. Do, 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 do. It's one of those places where you just find the boss right away. There you go. Labyrinth.
<laughs> or we can test it out in PvP apparently. There we go. Ronin will help out. <laughs> I have to download it still. Oh yeah, this is his epic house. So I guess we'll do a show and tell as well. Not so much of a tell, but wow, he's done some extra stuff apparently. Got a maze of obsidian rock. Some mannequins. Alright. And I'll have a gargantuan here just to uh, just to increase the. I'm mean, pretty sure he can take a lot, a lot of damage himself. I can't imagine what the level 70 gear would be like and how much health I would get out of that. I mean, this is, you know, just the normal level 60 gear. And I've got 4,100 health, and I haven't reached 70 yet. So, so as you can see here, Ice now has a spell with 9 pips to do 1,000 to 1,100 and stun for one turn. So, yeah, that's that's going to be interesting. to see <clears throat> Actually, no, that is that is somewhat of a lie. I think it would be more interesting to see the sirens in PvP. Cuz as of now there are so many things that could be fixed out of that. or fixed for that spell. Um, not only the text itself, so it reads correctly, or at least it performs correctly uh, as its description implies or states, but uh, alright here we go. Wooly Mammoth to the face. And if he doesn't get stunned we'll blame his amulet, because he's wearing the anti-stun. <laughs> <coughs> Snowman ready to get it, ready to take you out, but no, Wooly Mammoth territory. They're saying no, nah. nah, this guy's our guy. So it gives you a a side smack with the tusk, and then nice, and then a forward tackle with its head, and then it stuns you with its trunk. Pretty neat. So just stunned for one round. So I think that was a cool effect with the way that it blew out, <laughs> blew into your opponent's face, and, and then just stunned them upright like that. So that is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna hit you back. Just as hard, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm out a little here, but uh, yeah, that's so. That's the Wooly Man spell. That's how to get that spell itself. It isn't too hard. You know, you don't have to get up on too many strategies just to get your spell and whatnot. So that's that. So uh, thanks for checking out this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, you know, hope this sparks up some new strategies for you in PvP, especially regarding the uh, the new star spells. And uh, I'm going to catch some shut eye right now and tomorrow, which is today, technically Friday, uh, we'll be exploring some more spells and whatnot. We'll check out some of the new sun s or some of the new sun spells, like uh, extraordinary, I believe, and colossal. So that'd be interesting. 
Anyways, uh, have, hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll see you in the spiral. Peace.